little over a year ago, I had transformed my dining space from this plain beige look to incorporating a bold wall. And in case you're wondering, the color was called Antigua by Bare Paint, but that look no longer goes with my aesthetic. And so I'm updating my dining room again. So how did I decide to go from this bold wall color to just a plain white wall? So it's probably easier for me to show you rather than just tell you. So here's how it all happened. When I appeared on Afternoon Live for a DIY TV segment, all I could focus on was the way the wall looked in the background. It just wasn't the clean aesthetic that I loved. And honestly, the two colors on the side and then the one beige color behind me really drove me crazy. And if that wasn't enough, I had started to accumulate quite the collection of Cricut vinyl and crafting supplies. The problem was I didn't have anywhere to put them. So a few months ago, I landed the Create Room Partnership and I knew it was time to update my dining room to reflect my aesthetic. So let's dive into that transformation. It's no surprise that I painted first and that I also took everything off the walls. I say this in all my makeover videos because as always, I plan on reusing some of my items. That's actually not something I always say, but maybe you guys see it in the videos, but I actually don't say it all the time. Anyway, the logic behind it is when I buy something that's going to be a staple in my house, I try to buy something that I wouldn't mind reusing again if I did decide to change the look up, like in this video. Of course, that doesn't always work out, but for the most part, it does. I love when a room looks bright and airy, so my go-to color is Polar Bear by Bear Paint. I actually got this recommendation from an interior designer, Monica Hibbs. Well, not actually from her, but like from her website. <laughs> so I knew that this was the color I could use in every space. It is a white paint that has like a hint of creaminess to it and it doesn't leave the rooms looking yellow or stark like a doctor's office. And I've used this paint color in my bedroom, which by the way, I've captured some of my favorite photos in that space. And my kitchen is already painted polar bear, so I figured it was a win. Painting the room wasn't hard, but it wasn't easy either. The problem was getting into the high parts of the ceiling and that's actually what prevented me from painting the walls before it was the height of the ceilings. I didn't have a high enough ladder before, so I ended up borrowing one. Not sure why I didn't think about that one before. The ceilings were the highest ceilings I had ever painted and every time I climbed the ladder, I was kind of nervous. I'm not gonna lie about that. <laughs> and then the bulkhead was pretty simple, but I kept having to get up and down the ladder to move it across. So that was like kind of more inconvenient than anything. It was the most time consuming part as well, even though it seemed like it would be, probably be one of the most simple parts. Um, and also just a note, the two Antigua painted walls were really easy to paint. Obviously they're just flat and easy to reach, but I had to actually prime those wall first so that the color of the whites can be even. And then I went over those with like two coats of paint. And in some of the clips, you can see that the paint looked kind of splotchy and just, it didn't look good, but I kept going, trust the process. And then now all the white looks even on the walls and everything looks good. So good morning, it is the next day. I am still painting. I was taking my time to like go up and do the ceiling area because um, these are high ceilings. When I get up on the ladder, I get a little nervous that I'm gonna fall. So um, I just was taking my time. As you can see, I still have the bulkhead to do and this wall behind me. Um, so I'm gonna work on that today. I did go ahead and do um, the multiple coats of paint on the other parts that are already white. I am loving how everything is looking so far. Oh, one more thing I forgot to say was I really did like that Antigua color that I painted, but this is going to be more my style. But for everyday kind of living, I am going to be loving this like new polar bear white that I'm using. It's one of those tried and true paint colors that you just can't ever go wrong with. Like I wasn't trying to go for like that Guggenheim Museum look, but here we are. It doesn't look like Guggenheim Museum, just so you know. It looks like home. And here's just a quick look at me finishing up the walls and the bulkhead. A few months ago, I did not have a craft room in my house. And when I started partnering with Cricut, I was actually using the back of my dining room as my crafting space. 
And so now with the Create Room Dream Box, I have my own amazing space to do all my creative things. I've been saying that in my last few crafting videos that I felt like I didn't really have a setup to do crafting videos, and now I do. I'm able to stay highly organized with all these compartments. It is a major organization storage box that I really truly love like so much because it literally keeps me on track and I can organize all of my supplies. I do all different types of like creative things. So it's not just like one type of craft that I do. Of course I do DIY, I like doing home decor, but I also like exploring and doing other activities too. Playing with glitter and you know making stickers and stuff like that. So I'm able to organize all those things in this Create Room Dream Box. Before I was wondering where my scissors were, where did I put the glue? I could have sworn I had, like I couldn't find my pens. <laughs> I was literally looking for like the most basic things that anyone pretty much has in their toolkit. I couldn't find it because I didn't have anywhere to put them. <laughs> so now I have this in my dining room. And of course I love it in my dining room because it is my workspace and that's where I've been doing like my creative videos anyway. So it just made the most sense. But also one major factor is that when it's closed, it basically looks like a cabinet and that's what I was going for in this space. When it's closed, I want it to look like a real dining room and when it's open, you know, I'm doing my thing. So if you guys are artists or crafters or even small business owners, this is like a game changer. If you guys are interested, I do have a link to that dream box video and you can see me assemble the whole thing from start to finish. And I have an affiliate link in the description box with a discount code. So if you guys are interested in getting one, you can check it out. So the sideboard used to be white and when I first painted it a while ago, I made a few mistakes on it. As you can see, it's like all scratched up on the top. I ended up painting it black with enamel paint. I changed out the hardware and it looks like a completely different piece of furniture. I also have this full video on my channel if you're looking for tips on painting laminate furniture. I'm also moving this to one side of the dining room since I now have the dream box for the other back corner. One more thing I wanted to show you for the sideboard was this battery organization. I keep mine in the bottom drawer because we kind of always need batteries around here. So instead of them being in boxes and loose and all unorganized, I'm using this plastic tray to sort the different size batteries. Honestly, I don't even know why I didn't do this before because it makes perfect sense and it makes finding batteries a thousand times easier. And it's really nice to have a nice organized sideboard drawer now. This is the before of my fireplace. I actually liked the white fireplace in the space, but I felt like it needed a pop against the white wall. It just like looked too plain or something. So I painted it. First, I use a cleaning spray for the top of the mantle. I use frog tape to tape all around the edges just to make sure that no black paint got onto the walls. To actually paint the fireplace, I use a two inch brush. It went on really smooth and left minimal brush strokes. I use this because of all the corners on the front and on the sides. One tip though, I had to use a small brush to get into the grooves of the mantle. I use what I had around the house, which was basically one of my son's craft brushes from Michael's. To paint the flat side of the surface, I use a four inch foam roller for the top and the same brush for the underside. And if you didn't already guess, I reused the same enamel alkyd black paint that I had left over from painting the sideboard. It would just match a sideboard exactly and because enamel alkyd paint dries hard, I thought it would be perfect because sometimes I do like to put things on top of the mantle and I didn't want to risk anything chipping. Something felt off about the gold trim that was on the fireplace. I don't know if it's because it was like shiny or something. It just didn't like, it just didn't look right. So I decided to spray paint it a matte black to give it a more modern feel. I used Rust-Oleum in a flat black. I needed about two coats for this and I made sure I spray painted it from every angle. After that dried, I put the front grills of the fireplace back into place and then removed the frog tape. 
I'm not sure if you guys remember this painting, but this is the one I had did in my bedroom um, when I did the bedroom makeover not too long ago. I plan on doing like a DIY painting, but I'm going to use this one for now just so I can like wrap up this project. Um, plus, I think it looks pretty good in this room. So stay tuned for something like that. I have been wanting to install sconces on either side of the fireplace since my last dining room makeover. If I knew then what I know now, I would have installed these wireless sconces a long time ago. So basically how I installed them, it's super easy. I measured the same distance from the painting and ceiling so the lights can be even on either side of the painting. And then all I did was drill the screws in, add the shade on top, and install the special light bulb. And the link to these will be in the description box below. And one last thing, these come with battery powered operated lights. All you do is charge them with a USB and use a remote Ta-da! Isn't that so cool? <laughs> ah, I'm so excited! Today's really exciting because I'm finally gonna be putting my pictures and like my wall situation together on this wall here. And I want to show you something. So I got these gallery lights from Amazon. These are so cool because they are battery operated. I don't have to worry about like learning how to like drill holes and stuff in the wall here. Um, I can just use these battery operated lights and it comes with, like a little switch thing in my bar. And um, I really want to just show you guys the back too. So you see the back, this slides down. So you can drill this into the wall and then just slide this on top. And then here is where the battery actually goes. Since I have three lights, I centered the first one in the middle of the wall. The lights come with a self leveler to make sure that they're installed evenly. Once everything was drilled into the wall, it was easy to slide the cover on. Then I put up my extra large gallery frame. In case you're wondering how I made this frame on a budget, this is how I did it. Instead of using traditional frames, I grabbed extra large poster frames from Hobby Lobby at 50% off. And then I grabbed this extra large poster board from Michaels to create a faux matte look. I used an extra piece of paper to create a cutout where my actual photo would be. I trace around it with a pencil and then use a ruler and a craft knife to cut out the shape. I printed an 8x10 photo on my Canon Pro 100 printer and used tape to secure it in place. Once I flipped it over, you can see how nice the faux matting looks. The poster board is perfect because it comes with a plexi plastic style front instead of glass. Everything is layered just like a regular picture frame. The black edges slides onto all four sides and it keeps everything in place. To install the frames, I use command strips. Because the frame was so large, I used four strips per frame. And then to measure on the walls, I measure about seven inches in between each frame and I use a pencil to mark my placement. I also measured seven inches in between the museum lights as well. It was easier to install the frames first, so I did that on either two sides and then did the museum light on top. So just one extra comment is I always feel like my frames can sometimes not align perfectly, so this method just helped me out a lot. I've come to the realization that I'm basically the queen of overthinking. I've been working on this dining room for probably a month and obviously it's not that much stuff in here so it really shouldn't have took me that long. But like I said before, I'm the queen of overthinking so every little thing I was just like procrastinating on and overthinking. <laughs> so anyway, in today's video, I am finally getting to the last part of the dining room. This is like the home stretch of it all. And um, I'm gonna be working on this DIY mirror that I have planned out. Originally, my design was extremely complicated. And again, I always do this. I always make some sort of complicated design in my head and think of a way that I can do it the easiest. This time I went full on simple. Well, that's not true. This time I went almost simple. So simple enough where I can accomplish this probably in one day, 
two days. So with that whole spiel, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna need my leveler, tape measure, of course, and the mirrors. Um, I right, think I'm just gonna do it 12 inches up. Okay. All right, so I kinda got like a semi frame here. So I think I'm gonna get some tape, tape around and see the size that it will be. One, two, three, four, five, six, so six across. All right. First, I taped up the wall with painter's tape for size reference. I had already measured how many mirrors can fit across so it could be centered above the sideboard. So I basically opened up a bunch of mirrors at once so that it was easy to install each one pretty quickly. The mirrors came with adhesive tabs, so I used those. I also used the tape on the wall as a guide when I was sticking the mirrors to the wall. I wanted to just make sure that they were straight and level. Okay, so the mirrors are up on the wall and I'm not sure how I'm liking them, but this is one of those projects that I kind of have to see through to the end because um, I was trying to adjust one of the mirrors. It kind of got like, I don't know, misaligned a little bit. And you can notice it when you're like really up close to it, but further away, it's probably really not that noticeable. So I tried to move it and then it broke. And then some of the paint came off and so I was like stressing about it and I had to just <laughs> step away from it. I got really nervous and I wanted to like finish that part so I didn't record it but um, that's why I'm just kind of talking about it now. Anyway, um, I'm actually just going to get ready to do the, um, the frame part of it and this was one of my ideas about doing the frame part of it so I'm hoping the frame really pulls it all together and uh, allows it to look the way that I had originally envisioned. But at the end of the day, if I don't like it, I can change it in the future. That's like the beauty of being able to switch things out, right? And find a mirror that's extremely heavy and get it professionally installed. I headed to Home Depot and picked out the trim. They had lots of options and I'm even considering using a different style in a future DIY project. I used this metallic rustoleum spray paint to make the wood look gold. And just a note, I did end up cutting the wood pieces before spraying them, but once it was all sprayed, I did a couple of coats and I let everything dry overnight. For the final touches on the mirror, I'm using electrical tape. This is a little hack that I thought about so that the mirror project could look even more complete. I'm covering all the lines where the individual mirrors meet and I had to finish some of the parts the next day because I actually ran out of electrical tape and all the stores were closed. Since it was the next day and the trim was dried, I installed it just underneath the mirrors and all around on all four sides. Then I used my brad nailer to secure it into the wall. I also added a few square elements on each corner because it made it look a little bit more decorative and finished. And then I added a beautiful wood floor that I had also sprayed in gold and I put that in the center at the top. And finally, I'm reusing my curtain rods that I already had, and also I'm reusing the same curtains that I had, but I am adding an additional shade of cur new curtains that I got from Ikea. I like how the darker shade adds like a bit more texture to the room and helps it to not look so stark. And this is just a quick reminder of where the dining room started out. It was completely beige and uninspiring. Then this is what the dining room looked like last year when I painted it with the two accent walls to create a bold look. And this is what it looks like now. I love the white walls with the black fireplace and black sideboard. I think the whole feeling of the dining room is a mix of luxe and traditional. The DIY mirror ended up turning out nice and I'm glad I kept going with that project. I do want to play around with like a DIY painting or something. So I may try that soon. So if you guys are interested in something like that, make sure you subscribe with the notifications turned on. One comment about the curtains, I may change it in the future to sit even higher, but for now, what I have works. I love how the dream box fits seamlessly in a space, whether it's open or closed. You don't know what it is until it's open. And even then when it is open, everyone that comes over loves the look of it. 
the gallery wall with the museum light is probably my favorite decor feature in the space. I was inspired by high-end gallery walls, but I wanted to do mine on a budget and I love the idea of using the plexiglass instead of real glass or the plexi plastic or whatever you want to call it. And I'm really happy with the way that turned out. If this dining room makeover inspired you in any way, let me know in the comments below. And if you're looking for more room inspiration, I created a playlist for you to watch at the end of this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Everybody in the video, give mommy one billion and a thousand subscribers. See you later, alligators.